Hello. I have an Optimus Prime figurine, but this is not about him. I'm just holding him because I feel like it. Um, I'm going to take you on a little journey of imagination. And I'm going to show you what a social situation is like for an autistic person. So let's close our eyes. Close your eyes. I mean it, really. Close them. Okay. This is what it's like. I'm going to compare it to something that I think anybody can associate with. So, here we go. There's a new play in town. So you go to the theater to see it because you just you're just curious about it and you want to see what it's all about. You're just kind of casual, just a hoodie and jeans, hoodie and sweats, sneakers, maybe you're wearing Godzilla slippers like me right now. Open your eyes if you want to see them, otherwise keep them closed. <laughs> anyway. So you have a front row seat and you sit down. And all of a sudden, one of the actors runs out and they pull you up onto the stage and you are suddenly in the play. Everybody's looking at you, the audience and the actors. You don't know your role, you don't know your lines, you don't know what you're supposed to do or say or anything. None of that. You don't know. And you look at the other actors. They're wearing masks that partly obscure their face. You can see their eyes and their mouth. And you can see their individual facial features enough to identify each person. But you can't read their expression. And they're wearing neon colored contact lenses. And there's a black light somewhere. So their eyes are just really piercing and intense to look into. Even the ones that are not really a super bright color, like, like a purple or a dark blue, but the fluorescent light makes them really, really intense to you. And it's kind of scary. And anytime you look into your eyes, it's so intense because it feels like they can suck everything out of, about you right out of your eyes just by looking at them. But you can't do the same when you look at them. And you can't read their facial expression. So you have to look at their mouth to see whether or not they're smiling. And you listen to their tone of voice to kind of guess what they're feeling. And you look at their clothes to kind of figure out the situation they might be in. They're dressed not formal, but not like sloppy casual like I am right now. You know, they're dressed for like maybe a job interview or dressed to go to church or maybe to a nice sit down dinner with family. Maybe it's a birthday party. You know, an adult's birthday party, not a kid's, but an adult. But they all seem to magically know everything they're supposed to say and do. Because they have the script, they know the rules. So it's kind of innate to them because they've been practicing this and they know this stuff. But you don't. You're there and you have to fumble through and you're not even dressed appropriately. But the people are so polite that they don't, like, point that out. But you know. You know you're different from them. You know you stick out and you know that you don't socialize like them because you don't know the things they know. But you fumble through and you get through the play. And you're probably very nervous or maybe you relax because you got to know them and they're cool people. Or at least they played really cool people. Who knows? But when it's done, you just, you're tense, so you go home, and it's just like, ah, it's over. Open your eyes now. That's a social situation to an autistic person. At least for me. It may not be the same for every autistic person, but that's what I compare it to. And I'm sure that's something you can identify with, something you can understand at least. You can put yourself in that situation and kind of guess it and imagine how awkward it feels, right? Well, 
The stage is everywhere outside of my house. The actors are everybody that is not people, everybody that isn't people I know. And well, the roles are whatever the role is in their life that they play. I play my own role, but socializing can be very confusing to me. But like I said, the play analogy, it just, it makes sense to me to try to explain what it's like to try to be social when you have autism because it's not easy. But it's not a bad thing either. It's not a bad thing to be the big dork in the crowd because sometimes it can be fun and it's okay to be different. That's the thing is you need to realize that it is okay to be different. And it's okay to be kind of not understood at a glance. It's kind of fun to be a bit of a mystery sometimes. But I'm not a puzzle to be solved. I'm just different and I have layers. I'm like Shrek. I have layers. And the more comfortable I get with people, the more layers I peel off. That's just how it is. But socializing with autism can be very scary. And it's probably scarier to someone who's younger than me. I've been fumbling through socializing for 34 years. I kind of know a few tricks to get through it without like coming off completely awkward. Usually it's to have food and be eating so much that I don't have to talk. <laughs> That's one of my tricks. But um, it's not always a fun one, but I do like to eat so it's not unusual to see me around the food at a, like a party or something. I'm always around the food or the drinks. You know, I like to have a beer or a glass of wine or a very small shot of scotch or whiskey or tequila, but only a very little bit because I get drunk very fast because I'm so light. I'm so skinny. But just remember that it's okay to be different and it's okay if you don't fit in because just because you don't fit in here doesn't mean you won't fit in somewhere else. I never fit in in high school. I was bullied really bad. I've mentioned that so many times in my videos. But with my church choir, I'm just one of the people I belong. And after spending my entire life not belonging to belong there in church with my choir with like-minded people, they're not autistic, but they're all there for the same reason. And it's to sing for God and to enjoy music. And that's something I mesh with really well, so... Just because you don't fit in now doesn't mean you never will. You'll find your place. Or you'll make one. You can make a place. You know, you can create your space and draw people to you. Just the same. And that's okay. It's okay to not fit in. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be weird. It's okay, it's okay to be a goofball. It's okay to be a nerd and a dork. I mean, hello, I'm cuddling an Optimus Prime figurine and I'm wearing Godzilla slippers. I mean, if this doesn't say I'm a nerdy dork, I don't know what will. And I'm okay with that. And someday I hope you'll be okay with it too. Mwah.